You're now tuned into the Lady Charmaine Live Show, and I'm your host, Lady Charmaine. And as we know, everything is hot in Las Vegas, from the parties, the shows, to the casinos. And my next guest is no exception, because they represented their area code very well. And I'll let you know who it is coming up right after this. Lady Charmaine and my guests today, they hail from the city of Las Vegas and they shot to start him in the mid 1990s with hits like this little game we play Stilo and the women's anthem with my girls at and they are here today to talk about their TV one unsung episode, the story of 702. Help me welcome the ladies to the Lady Charmaine live show, Mila, Misha and Irish, better hey. known as 702. Hey, hey how you hey. doing? Hi. What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> doing good. Good. Well, first, I want to say happy belated birthday to Misha and Irish. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you Thank you're you. welcome. You're welcome. Now, did you ladies do anything special for your birthday? You know, I, I wish it was more. I wish I was in Jamaica or something like that. I wish I could say <laughs> that. Um, I turned 40, but I ended up uh, actually around the city of Vegas. You know, we had a good dinner, me and my husband, and then we went out and did the high roller experience and a couple other spots, you know, so we had a good time here in Vegas. Well, at least you live in yeah, a city I, where I you can have to, fun. For, Go ahead, Iris. Say that yeah, again? Yeah. I said, at least you live in a city where you can have fun and everything, so that's good. Thank you. That's right. what Vegas is about. I got to eat my favorite. I, I was eating a crab leg mm. and uh, <laughs> seafood. That's always my favorite. You know, some high, some lows of the day. But it still was a good birthday. Good. Well, happy birthday to you both. And again, I want to say congratulations on your TV One Unsung episode, the story of 702. So now I got to ask you, Misha, were you surprised to get the call when they wanted to do a story about you? I ask everybody the same question. And if so, what was your reaction? Um, I, I was, I, I wouldn't say that I was surprised. I think that um, I knew that it was going to come along at some point in our, my life again. Um, I would say that I was a little nervous about the whole aspect of it all, you know, uh, you know, bearing our, uh, putting all our feel feelings out there, putting my feelings out there. It's not something that I was really, you know, excited to do. But, you know, overall, it was a great experience, and I'm happy that we did it. Well, I'm happy that you ladies did it, too, because I got a chance to watch the screen. I learned a whole lot about you ladies, which I'm sure a lot of people are going to learn when they watch it on this Sunday. So make sure you tune in to TV One Unsung for the story of 702. Now, Misha and Irish and your late sister Orish, you know, my condolences. I'm, I'm glad I'm able to talk to you guys personally to give you my condolences, although it's been several years. But you uh, three first became a group and then there was someone else added to the group. And you will notice on Sunday that it went through a couple changes, but you Ladies had a chance meeting with Simbad that literally changed the course of your lives, basically. So can you tell us about that? Absolutely. Well, tell us about Simbad? Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, I remember uh, it to this day, and I was, what, 12 years old, somewhere around there. And I remember to this day, of course, <laughs> Las Vegas, you know, the strip, you know, you're, you're riding up and down the strip, and uh, we saw him at Jesus Palace. And we were all dressed like, for, I don't know what we were like, uh, leaving or we were going to an event or leaving an event. And we saw him and our manager said, look, y'all, there's Sinbad. And it was like one of those like fluke, you know, like uh, just like a coincidence moment to where you don't really see famous people. <laughs> and so when we saw him and our manager said, go and sing, it was like, yes, this is our chance. This is our chance, you know. <laughs> and we just tried to sing our hearts out. We just tried to, I mean, we were uh, in the middle of Caesar Palace doing dance steps and everything, you know, mm -hmm. and even even mm -hmm. formed a crowd. And, and that's really, Sinbad really started um, our uh, uh, thinking that we could go outside of Las Vegas mm. to pursue our endeavors. He, he gave us that belief, you know, when he said, wow, you guys are something else. Then we were like, wow, we can do this outside of Las Vegas and, you know, in the ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> 
So <laughs> it was like ghetto. a dream come true. It was a dream come true. Yeah. Because your group literally had so many layers because, Misha, then you guys ended up having a chance meeting well, hook up with Michael Bivens. You did your thing on stage. But then after meeting Michael Bivens and you guys kind of had it going on a little bit and then some major changes happened. Tell us about that. Right. Uh, yeah, so we uh, started off as a foursome, actually. So it was me, Irish, me, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, me, Irish, Orish. And Amelia, mm-hmm. and um, that's we got signed as a foursome. So we ended up doing the Subway um, song. This little game we had <laughs> play um, was our first um, feature, you know, of any t- type in, um, in, you know, coming out. Um, so that went really well. And then, you know, eventually Mike, Mike had his own, you know, thoughts about, you know, changing the direction of the group. And so we had to make a few changes. And luckily enough, I went to school with Miss Mila. And so, <laughs> knowing how beautiful, knowing how beautiful she could sing, I was like, "Look, can you please audition for our group?" And the rest is history. <laughs> well, I think that's a pretty. I think that's a pretty good history. <laughs> and so now, steps in the Miss Beautiful yeah. Mila. Here you go. Now you joined a group that was already established. They were family, and also the mm-hmm. sister was one of the managers, and you got the brother-in-law who's one of the managers. What was it like for you stepping in into not just the family, but they were literally knitted by blood? What was that for you? Did you ever feel like an outsider coming in? Oh, of course. I think naturally, um, any human being would feel that, you know, uh, especially because it's so funny. Um, I don't tell this story often, but it's, it's crazy how life works. Cause like we went to the same high school, like Nisha said, and it was just so funny cause we were like so impressed and just like, oh my God, just in awe of the fact that we went to school with superstars. Like, you know, we had made this band, we meaning the, the other fellow students and made this banner for 702 because I was like, yo, I went home and told my mom we go to school and famous because like they're on video solo with Donnie Simpson. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I was, in, you know, I was just like so excited. Like we made this banner for them. Like congratulations to 702. We were just like, oh my Lord, we go to school with these celebrities, ma. And so when Misha approached me and asked me what I joined, I was, of course, I was shocked and stunned, but at the same time, beyond flattered, like, of oh, what will I audition? Heck yeah! And uh, <laughs> were you scared, Mila? I was nervous in the beginning. I don't know. Like it didn't. I wasn't sure if it was real. I was like, I feel like I'm changing my mind because like this don't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> then, like it's this my first time hearing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like and and so many to answer your question. Of course, in the beginning, of course there was like maybe some reservations, but overall I was I was I mean I was flattered and just hum- humbled that they would even you know, consider me and, and welcome me in. I mean, we were, we were like, in the beginning, close and had fun. And we were mm-hmm. like sisters. But of course, you know, as time goes on and it's, it's, um, we become older and unfortunately well. the whole story with, with with groups, things just tend to happen, you know. Right. But thankfully, you know, our, our songs and our, and, our, and our catalog, you know, and our fans have carried us through. So that's why we're here today talking to y'all. You know, and every group goes through something because that's one thing I love about Unsung. We learn so much mm-hmm. about our favorite groups and artists. And I'm so glad that you all, along with everyone else, is willing to share the ups, the downs, the good and the bad. And it's not like we walk away from your stories like, oh, my God, we walk away from your stories seeing how you guys are able to triumph, especially groups that get back together, reform. The love is still there, just like your group, because the group had a lot of success. Your bank account was rising. You was able to see numbers in there. Relationships start to form. But it seems like as groups begin to go up, right. cracks tend to come into the group. So I want to ask you, Mila, what do you think some of those cracks were that started to enter into the group? Well, I feel like, you know, naturally, as you stated before, being that it was an already um, familial situation, you know, an already uh, family um, orchestrated group, you know, you have that dynamic and then you have me who has um, no necessarily, uh, re- um, you know, family related um, ties with the girls. However, we have become family, but of course you can have other people, other outside influences, family, non-family that may be in your ear, you know, um, being, I think that we were so young, just learning each other and ourselves and learning just how to be successful, yet still remain mm-hmm. humble, all those things that they play a part. We, we don't really know, I don't think at that young age, how to deal with success and how to deal with, you know, other outside influences, whether they're family or not family. I think it's 
like a learning curve for, for you. And unfortunately, you have all this success, all this money, all this fame, and you know, these people who love and support you, but everybody, you know, that may or may not be in your family may not be in your corner, or maybe they are, but maybe they're giving you direction that may not be the best direction or the mm-hmm. best guidance. You're like, who do I listen to, you know? Right, right. Life is a little <laughs> tricky. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't feel yeah. like it's for the right reason. Yeah. Because I know in 1990... But thankfully, you know, once you get older, you realize, you know, it's about us and not everybody else, you know? Absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. Because exactly. in 1999, things for you guys were popping. I mean, y'all had a hit record on the radio. One of the girls at Misha had a beautiful baby boy. And then, then of course, Lavelle, then he ends up getting out of jail. And then um, now there's going to be two co-managers. There's the discussion about co-management. Now, this is another question for Mila. Mila, yeah. why did you feel it was important to bring your mother in? Was there in, any type of insecurity that you were feeling now at the time that you felt that you needed somebody to be able to speak on your behalf or to support you? Absolutely. I think that's the unfortunate thing about, um, you know, doing a show that only can capture so much. You know, mm-hmm. we had three albums and three ladies and only like a 55 minute show. And when you do commercials, right. about 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so, I wasn't, so, you know, there were some things that I did say to explain, further explain me wanting to bring in my mother, but unfortunately that part um, wasn't used. But mm-hmm. I think it was important because unfortunately um, uh, our past management, Lavelle, um, kind of was dishonest um, in a monetary way with some of the budgeting um, things. And I just felt like it only made sense to bring in somebody that had my best interest to make me feel comfortable mm-hmm. moving forward with, you know, um, the accounting part of things. So mm-hmm. I, that's why I really wanted to bring my mom in because at the time that was just like the only person I could think of that I felt would be honest with me um, about my money. Um, right. And so that's why I felt it was most important to bring her in. Yeah, I was it able wasn't to pick like, that okay, up. y'all got y'all family, so I need my family. Right, right. That right. was useful there. Like, like, that's my big brother. You know what I mean? So I just thought maybe... I could bring my mom in just to got my eyes across my teeth. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I so see I that. This woman at that point. So then you guys will learn there was a big blow up. So now after the blow up, then all of a sudden Amila leaves and now you're coming back. But you was coming back on different terms. You came back as a businesswoman. Look, I got my contracts going. I got my stuff signed, but I wanted to get into the crux. What was it like after you came back, Mila? Now you ladies are in the studio. What was it like now going into the studio? Was it t- this separation? Did you guys still have that co- cohesiveness? Although the label wanted you to come back. What was the chemistry like? Well, she's asking some oh. deep questions, y'all. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm like, right. you're, you're asking about who's asking that right? too. <laughs> yeah, asking. Why don't y'all get the answer? Look, I'll let y'all in. <laughs> I'll say this. Uh, let me answer it. This is Misha. I'll answer it. Yes, there was a lot of tension. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would say it's because there was a, it was, it was very hard to mesh two management teams mm-hmm. along with the group. You know, we were coming back from a, a very distant, you know, situation and trying to regroup. Um, and I think that uh, along with the two different management teams, them yakking it up between each other, them arguing and, you know, there was a lot of tension there. They do. I mean, don't get me wrong. Anytime the three of us get together, we do nothing but laugh. And I guess so. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that part is like, it was still the same, but the tension was coming from the behind the scenes, right. and it was kind of creeping into who we are, the group. Mm. Yeah. Well, at least you guys were able to know that. At least you guys were able to know that and be able to pick that up. So now one of my, yeah, one of my next questions. (laughs) At 38 and 40. (laughs) You know, they say with age comes wisdom. (laughs) So there is a lot of wisdom I believe you guys were able to actually get from, you know, that situation. And so now what, what? After all these years, I want to know from each one of you, beginning with Irish, what did you guys learn from your situation? And if you had to do it all over again, what would you have done differently? Oh, oh my God. That's a bad good one. That's a really bad uh, <laughs> right. question. Um, the thing that I think I would do more of is I would be kinder to myself. Mm-hmm. And I would have um, kind of followed my own process and my own steps. Um, huh. Uh, I would have still stayed uh, humble and kind and, you know, <laughs> soft, uh, spoken, you know. But um, I kind of would have tried to still choose my own path um, as far as what was going on mm-hmm. with the group. 
Hmm. Instead of like stay, trying to stay uh, stay on one side or trying to choose one side versus the other, or you know, I would have just uh, been more upfront about what I wanted. Okay. You know, if if I can just say that much. But um, other than that, I don't think I would change a whole lot about what I did. Okay, Misha, you're next. Um, <laughs> this is going to sound so messed up, but I'm going to be honest. That probably wouldn't change anything. Okay. You know, uh, me personally, I'm, I have, I have a real strong personality and that's just in my nature. Um, I'm, I'm growing as a person, um, that I think takes time, but mm-hmm. in, in the situation and, and, you know, I'm very passionate and so I will speak my mind. I will be vocal and that's all that I always have been. Mm-hmm. So, um, I really honestly... I don't want to sound like a jerk, but I wouldn't tell you anything about what happened okay. or what I, my role. Well, at least you're being honest. Okay, Mila, you're next. Okay. Yep. <laughs> I guess it leaves me, huh? Um, so I definitely would have spoken up more. Um, I would have confronted, I think, um, a lot of the issues that we have. Mm-hmm. I would have definitely spoken up. Yeah, me and Mila didn't speak a lot at all. <laughs> <laughs> but now I probably talk too much, but I definitely feel like I would have, you know, just right. had a bit more to say when it came to um, how I felt when there was tension, how I felt when there was drama and no resolve, how I felt when, you know, we got into it as a group or mm-hmm. whatever. Like, I think I would have felt better had I been a little more um, stronger to, you know, confront the combativeness and not be so, you know, um, quiet about it. Right. Um, but at the same time, I would have also I would have also expressed more. Um, I think to Misha and to Irish how I felt very grateful and pre- and appreciative, you know, for being in the group. And I would have expressed more. I think how I um, understood how they felt, how they could have, you know, had um, not necessarily malicious ill feelings, but animosity or just felt a way about my coming into a group mm. um, that was already there and was them and their sisters. Like, I think I really would have wanted to express more that I was not insensitive to how they, that could have made them feel. Mm. But there's no ownership, me. There's no ownership, you know. There's there's right. only the three of us. Like, there never should have been or could be, you know, 702 without the three of us. You know, right. like, nobody can nobody can own or claim the, the name 702. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. So you you were a part of the growth. Aw, that's so sweet. And I think it's thank you. And I, but I just you know want I just want you know I think y'all to 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 know. And I've said this to them before now. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think would have would have definitely just made it a little more clear that hey, I really am not insensitive to like you know how y'all could feel because if the shoe was on the other foot, like I really understand how hurtful you know, or just confusing that all could have been, especially at that young age. Um, but thankfully now, you know, we've moved past all of that. But, um, yeah, I just mm-hmm. wish I would have been more vocal because I know there were times, like Misha even said it in this episode that you'll see this Sunday, like, you know, she felt like I should have had their back more. And I feel mm-hmm. like at the time I didn't feel like I didn't have anybody's back. I just felt like it wasn't my responsibility. So I do wish yeah. now that mm-hmm. I, looking back, I wish I was the Mila that I am now to, you know, step to anybody and, and speak on behalf mm-hmm. of my girls or anyone else. You know what I mean? Right. Not making anyone right or wrong, but just having the, a voice and using it. But at that time, we were all so young and so excited and mm-hmm. we want to lose our, our spots in, in a career that That's we were all we had to do. And we had right. seen that happen before. Like, I saw right. it happen with my twin sister. I saw it happen with a million. Mm-hmm. So we were all very, we were, we were very knowledgeable. I was about how, to how, how, here. Yeah, we're like, <laughs> how, we, we're like, we're very minute. We're very small mm-hmm. in the midst mm-hmm. of all of this money making machine, mm-hmm. and we can be replaced so easily. Right. And so a lot of us didn't, you know. Mm-hmm. Misha was, uh, Misha was very vocal, but me and Mila, we were quiet. We were very, um, we, we knew our place and we tried to just play our ball. Mm. You know, we did. Which, which sometimes is not always the best thing, but it's like, you know, like you said, yeah, yeah, I don't think that was our place to be quiet. If we were a little bit more vocal, then, you know, a lot of things that did happen might not have occurred. But I mean, yeah, like had a different approach. To me, that's all it was, is, you know. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that Maybe something what you learned? 
you know, and when you look back in yeah, hindsight, yeah. you know, the things that you learn, it's like, man, if I would have mm-hmm. been, you know, as we grow, you know, and get older and get a little bit wiser, the things that we probably could have done because, you know, just the power of one voice and you ladies or three voices, that would have been so much more powerful. Now, do you think you ladies would even consider doing a reality show or a docuseries, something kind of like what Escape did? Do you think that might be on the table for you? Absolutely. Um, we've yeah. been in talk with a few people. Nothing has filled, you know, yet. But um, I would say if my heart is anything, yeah, I would do it. Uh, you know, if if my soul feels right, then I would do it. I don't. I mean, I'm just trying to yeah. get to know us as adults. You know, mm. and uh, if 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 we can mesh as adults, then maybe yeah, that would be great. Okay. And the opportunities are there, but like we all have to be invested. Like we all kind of gotta want to do it because that reality TV is tricky, as I know from mm-hmm. doing R&B TV. Yep. I mean, thankfully, I stayed in the clear. I ain't do look. I ain't do no flipping <laughs> up the table and getting and throw no bottles. So you God, you were good on the show. You were good. <laughs> so that's, so that's it, good. It, it, but people don't put. But it's sad because you know people deem that as boring. People want to see drama. People want to see mess. People want you know. So that's why we're a little timid. It's like opportunity to opportunities are there but you know we want to make sure that it's the right thing because mm-hmm. we know that mm-hmm. everybody wants to see drama and we're still healing and we we, we like getting along so right. you know and and that's good and you have children yeah, too trying. And you have kids and, you know, you want to be careful what you put out there. Some people don't care. Yeah. But, you know, when you care about yeah. your image and, you and know. You wanna, and you want to learn, how, like, like at our age, we want to learn how to live, live our best life. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. we want to learn how to be good people and, and, you know, acknowledge that and teach our children that. So to come to a, a reality show where you have to be fake or you have to pretend that you're causing drama, Mm -hmm. it's like a, uh, okay, do I want to do that? (laughs) Is that worth it? Yep. You have to count up the cost. You know, so it's a a really big question mark. Very good. Well, ladies, I want to thank you guys so much for coming on the show. It was a pleasure having you. Really enjoyed you. Thank you so much for opening up on the show to us. And I want to remind the audience to be sure to tune in this Sunday to Unsung, the story of 702 at 10, 9 Central, right there on TV One. Again, my girls, Misha, Mila, and Iris, thank you so much for coming on the show today, ladies. Thank you so much. Thank you all. You are so thank welcome. You. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. And have a blessed day. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right, why don't I tell (laughs) y'all? Bye. So be sure to tune in this Sunday to Unsung, the story of my girl, 702. You will not regret it. Great show. Great ladies. Really nice. And trust me, you're going to learn so much about the group. And if you're looking to form a girl group, put all your girls in a room and watch this show. Because, you know, what? sometimes crafts can come in and other people can come in. But you know what? Like they said, they wish they would have had a voice to speak up. Use your voice. You're never too young to use your voice because you only have one and your voice is powerful. And this segment of the Lady Charmaine Live Show is sponsored by Rebuilding Your Dreams After the Storm Women's Conference. This conference is for anyone and everyone who feels like they've lost their purpose, their vision, or their dreams to an unexpected storm that has left their life in disarray. So if you want to rebuild your dreams and just get your life back on track, then I want you to go to rebuildingyourdreamsconference.eventbrite.com. This conference is going to be held on Saturday, July the 28th in Elk Grove. And I want to make sure that you are there to be inspired. Again, it's rebuildingyourdreamsconference.eventbrite.com. And again, I want to say thank you to the ladies of 702. You've been watching Lady Charmaine Live. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.